we're looking at something much more akin to the RTX 3050 Ti. Really, Anthony? A 3050 Ti? Well, guys, it has been long enough, and even though we absolutely love Linus Tech Tips, we love Anthony's coverage, we have to say something, because Linus Tech Tips is wrong about the M1 Max MacBook Pros. Now, I'm gonna show you guys some specifics, some details, and what is going on with their coverage, which, although it is amazing, very nice, very detailed, it really has a sort of a skew to it, and I'll show you guys what I mean. It started out when they they released their first video on the M1 Pro about a month ago, and while it had a nice title and some good info, there are a couple things that seem just to be cherry-picked, and some results that probably should not have been shown, making the M1 Pro look a lot worse than it did. The first but minor thing was the inclusion of a high-end AMD 16-core PC with an RTX 3090 on a ton of the graphs especially the ones where the M1 Pro has a good lead. So it doesn't look like it's that good, but of course we did have a G14 laptop, which is more competitive. And that's not that big of a deal, but then we start looking at some of these benchmarks. The first one here is Handbrake, showing off compressing and encoding a 1080p file with some really odd results that kind of had us scratching our heads. Why are the M1 Pro MacBooks taking way longer to encode this file than even the M1 Max, and then clearly showing off how the Windows machines are superior? Clearly there is something very wrong with this if an M1 for a thousand bucks is three to four times faster. Now thankfully they didn't just leave it at handbrake, they also tested out compressor, which also means that they could not include the Windows computers in this graph, but here you see it's three to four times faster, showing that handbrake is clearly not working, but also that the standard M1 is about the same performance, showing that Apple is in fact just focusing on 4K and 8K with these new chips. Now another thing, yeah, it's 1080p, most people are doing 4K for a while, but what's up with the 1.2 megabit per second bitrate? That is way worse than even YouTube video quality. And why not include maybe Premiere Pro, which most Windows people use, or DaVinci Resolve? Not just compressor and handbrake, which is not working. So I went ahead and tested it myself, and it took two minutes and 19 seconds in DaVinci Resolve. Meaning that it even beat out the 5950X with the RTX 3090, desktop graphics card, which was using Handbrake without any compatibility issues. So that was just kind of showing us maybe, I don't know, there's some benchmark cherry picking. Now along with that, let's just skip to some games. They tested out a couple games, but unfortunately all of the ones they tested and the other benchmarks aren't really optimized. They have clear limitations that they mentioned themselves. For example, Rosetta was slowing stuff down. So you see there's really no improvement as your graphics get better. And even a 3060 does beat it out. Now at this point, we were a bit disappointed, maybe slightly annoyed that even though they showed on screen that, hey, World of Warcraft is optimized, but they forgot to run it, and some of the other benchmarks clearly had issues, they weren't optimized, there was other stuff. We decided, hey, let's let it go. They said they spent over $30,000 on Macs, so that they have new content coming up, and this video is posted oh, three weeks after the launch of these machines, the actual ship date, so maybe they just tested out the wrong programs, and it was a total fluke. Um, well, this is what happened just recently. They released their full video on the M1 Max high-end chip almost a month after that, and we were super excited to check it out. All the new benchmarks and testing, they do an amazing job. We are huge fans, fans of Anthony as well. But stuff got a little bit weird, even more so. Look at this. Of course, we have that same high-end Windows PC system in pretty much all the benchmarks where it does well, but compared to the 14-inch laptops, we have a 16-inch Zephyrus now uh, with the much better cooling system instead of the 14-inch that they just used in the previous video, would be, which would be much more fair. We have some CPU benchmarks which show off the performance and how the, some of the other systems are really capable, but none of the real-world testing for some reason. I'll get back to that. They add 3D rendering using Redshift and show off how it gets smoked by this 3060 system and the fact that it is just so much cheaper than the MacBook Pro. 
In a laptop that costs a little over half as much at retail. Followed by Geekbench 5's GPU test, which even on day one, we knew that it's not properly running and showing scores that are not accurate. But unfortunately, we didn't get any other benchmarks that are properly running, which there are a ton of them. Maybe they meant games? Getting into gaming, we see the same programs that are not running properly as in the previous video a month before that. This is a month and a half or maybe closer to two months since these laptops came out. But where is other optimized things that do work properly? For example, World of Warcraft that they mentioned in the last video they forgot to test and it's clearly not included here at all, making the M1 Mac Pro just seem like they are pure garbage for gaming performance. Since we're looking for more ways the M1 Max can differentiate itself, there's one final ray of hope, the venerable Dolphin Emulator. And when they mention that they want to find something that works, they try out Dolphin Emulator, which is interesting, who's going to use that? And then they say that it doesn't even use Metal, you have to use OpenGL, which hasn't been supported for years, and then they show off performance that pretty much sucks. Then we look at the Zephyrus again, and it's a slaughter. This is where just where you just we're like, man, we have to say something. And I don't want to just uh, show off numbers that we have. Obviously, we love these Macs. We love uh, these machines. We think they're great. So what about another PC guy like Matthew Moniz? He compared the M1 Max to a custom PC using the brand new Alder Lake 12900K with a desktop 3080 and showed off the performance. I generally don't like making laptop versus desktop videos, but this year has been really different. These MacBook Pros have exceeded our expectations. Take a look at Blender and how it's outperforming the previous best CPU. Alder Lake is beating it out, but it's still super impressive. Nothing like a 3050 Ti. Hi. He also shows other tests like After Effects, which was just updated to use graphics and to be optimized. And look at how close this laptop performs even to a full on desktop PC. And then for graphics rendering in DaVinci Resolve for 4K, not 1080p, the M1 Max laptop smokes both the Alder Lake and the 11th gen system with the 3080 for exporting. He also shows compiling code, which is what a lot of people do with these laptops, not just gaming, almost nobody does, and then video editing, which it does well in. What about compiling code? What about logic? And here, the MacBook almost matched up with this brand new high-end Alder Lake system and a desktop and smoked the previous best Intel PC and compiling code. It is crazy. And with that, he showed how Shadow Tomb Raider does not scale properly at all. And when we look at a properly optimized game like World of Warcraft, the performance is close to a full on desktop 3080, let alone a laptop one. And as you guys know, if we look at other benchmarks that are cross platform, for example, 3D Mark's new Wildlife Extreme, the M1 Max MacBook gets very close to a nice 3080 gaming laptop in terms of performance. And then of course, Linus Tech Tips, they didn't mention anything about unplugged performance, which it goes down dramatically if you care about portability. And when they talked about battery life, conveniently, the Windows laptops were not included in there at all, only in the tests where it actually did better. And then when they say it costs less than half the price, it just makes it seem like the MacBook's a horrible deal when you don't even factor in the display with 1600 nits, the speakers, uh, the amazing battery life that is shockingly good, uh, everything else that it offers and all these other tests as well. It just seems like the M1 Max is basically something much more akin to the RTX 3050 Ti, much less the RTX 3080 we were promised. Once again, we love you guys, Linus Tech Tips. Anthony, you're doing a great job. We love you on camera, all the testing you do. But when we see videos like these that just seem like so many tests are cherry picked, and there's so much other benchmarks and tests and real world stuff that other reviewers are testing. I wanna exclude our stuff out of this video. Just things don't really add up. And 1.3 million people have seen that video already. So guys, we want you guys, I know we, you guys are gonna do more videos on these machines. You guys spent over 30 grand. We just asked, do some more tests, try to run some stuff that is compatible. And if something is clearly off and not working, let's just not include 
include that and try to include stuff that is working properly. We wanna show off the limitations of these machines as well. We've done a video, you guys can check it out right there. The downsides of M1 Max, they do have downsides. We're not only gonna talk about the positives, but when every test is either not working or it's not optimized or something else is going on, it just makes for a very, very muddy picture. So thank you guys for watching. Click that circle above if you guys wanna subscribe. Check out that video right there, this is Max, and I'll see you in the next video.